Hello everyone and welcome to Triton TV. This is Triton and today we're going to go over how to set up and use MemTest86. Um, MemTest86 is a software that allows you to <clears throat> check your RAM for any errors. It uses certain types of algorithms to um, pass uh, memory from the different bits, the different memory allocation uh, I guess you'd call them locations, uh, passes the memory back and forth in different patterns and different block sizes from one bit. I think it does like one bit, two bit, four bit, eight bit, and then it goes up to like 128 kilobytes. And it, so it passes bigger and bigger chunks of memory in different ways back and forth multiple times. And then it checks the memory at the end of each sequence. And then if the you know, end check of whatever that memory is supposed to say or do or whatever is um, what it started out as, then it passes that test and then moves on to another test. I think there's a total of four different tests and they have different algorithms for each test. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> why would you want to use MemTest86? MemTest86, like I said, checks your RAM. So for me, um, being a novice overclocker with uh, decent results, uh, it's a good way to know if your system is stable and if your RAM is working properly and it's a good diagnostics tool to figure out if anything else is wrong with your setup. So you're going to go to this website and download this file here. Let's see. Um, yeah, so you would just download the thing and then save the zip, unzip the file and let's jump into it. I already have it downloaded. I've used it multiple times before, but I have not used it in this setup with my four sticks of RAM. So this is going to be what the <clears throat> file looks like when you go ahead and uh, unzip it. So you're going to click on this and you will need a USB with, I believe, let's see if it says, yeah, you have to have 512 megabytes capacity USB stick, which and that's pretty easy. I have a 64 gig one. I think it was like $40 or 20 bucks or something. So USB sticks are cheap. That's all you need, 512 megabytes of capacity. And then you're gonna go ahead and click on this image USB button here. Click okay. And then you're going to select the um, device that you'd like. Double check, make sure you have the right thing if you have multiple USB devices connected. Um, yeah, so we're going to write image to USB and and then it's just going to select the image. This is just the location of this file and all you got to do is go ahead and click write. And it's going to say, hey, are you sure you want to do this? SanDisk, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this. It really makes sure that you don't overwrite things, which is a good thing. You don't want to overwrite, I don't know, backup data or something you have in USB. So let's go ahead and click yes here. It's gonna take a little while. I'm not sure exactly how long it takes. Looks like it's gonna be under a minute here. <clears throat> Alrighty, so it's just gonna double check that what it's writing is proper. Probably runs some type of checksum. Boom, image complete. You get this cool flashing thing here. All right, so now we have the USB formatted and ready to boot from the BIOS. So we're gonna jump into my camera, but I'm gonna show you something real quick. So if I go to, uh, renamed the thing, it used to be called Triton's USB. So if I click on here and I go to properties, you notice how it there's only 212 megabytes of uh, free space on this thing. It's it formats it to a way smaller, um, I guess, storage capacity than what it has. So this is something to note, and it actually says this in the README. Don't freak out. Um, it is weird when you know you have a 64 gigabyte USB stick to see that it only has, you know, 248 megabytes of storage. Don't worry about that for now. I just wanted to show you that when we reformat it back at the end of this video, you're going to see that I will reclaim all of the space. Let's jump into my camera. Alrighty, we are into BIOS here. 
the only thing we need to do right now is make sure we are booting into the SanDisk thing here. So I just clicked on the SanDisk USB and it should boot. Here we go. It is going to boot into Memtest 86. If you've never booted into a USB or CD or something, um, it's not that complicated. You're just telling your computer, hey, run whatever software is on this um, <clears throat> device. So this is what Memtest 86 looks like when you open it up. It's pretty nice. It has a graphical user interface, which is very, very welcome. Um, so you just select the icon. You can use the mouse or left and right key. We're going to go configuration. And then, um, you know, it's got the system information, shows our CPU here. The, this is just the base clock rate. Oh, cool, it says the turbo. That's, that's what I'm clocked at. Um, temperature, how many processors, the cache, blah, 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 blah. I can see all of the RAM. I have 32 gigs of RAM, and then it has the clock for the RAM. Um, I guess you can view more info, blah, 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 blah. Oh, look, these are clocked slightly different. I didn't realize that. That's because these are not the exact same. So we're going to go back into, looks like we got the address range. If you know anything about hexadecimal, these are hexadecimal um, memory locations from 0 to 86F000. That is a huge number right there. Um, each one of these is a base 16 number, so that's probably in the billions. Um, yeah, so it's going to use, I guess, just all the CPUs, blah, blah, blah. Test selection, it looks like there's, oh, okay, so I was wrong, there's 13 tests, but it runs them four different times. There we go. So we're going to go ahead and run this test. I'm not going to record the whole thing, but I'm going to let it run and do some other stuff while it's running, and I may or may not let it run through all of them. I think it took about three hours for the 16 gigs, so it might take a little longer for that. So. Oh, you can also do this um, benchmark for your RAM here. Read and write. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let's just uh, go ahead and uh, start this here. So you just click Start. And then what it's going to do is it's going to run these algorithms, like I said, and pass the memory back and forth between the different addresses. You can see what address. I'm assuming this is a range. So, and then it's... Yeah, it's doing whatever it's doing to the memory. Um, I'm assuming this has something to do with what it's doing to the bits right now. Keeps track of the time, 64 bit. This is how many pass, how many errors, blah, blah, blah. So last time I ran it, I had zero errors and I completed all four passes. Um, yeah, I wanna say it was about three hours or so. So you just let it run, let it do its thing and <clears throat> Hope that it passes. I'll touch back to you guys here in a bit. Alrighty, we are over three and a half hours into this test. We've gone through the first and second pass with zero errors. That's good. Right now it is running uh, test 13 called the hammer test. It's pretty interesting if you read about these tests. Uh, the link will be in the description for this website because that's where you have to download it anyway. Really, really interesting stuff. Um, these people obviously know their their stuff. Um, so if you know anything about hexadecimal, we're actually getting close to the end of this test because F, 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 F should be the highest memory range. So we're getting close. There we go, we just passed the third test. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it here, and um, or the third pass rather. I'm gonna go ahead and call it here because it's just doing the same test over and over, but yeah. So let's go ahead and cancel here. I think I'm gonna click C, I'm gonna push two, end test, test complete press any key to display summary. Here's the summary. Passed all of the tests, three hours and 40 minutes. Da 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 da. Alrighty.
I'm gonna run this real quick, RAM benchmark. Oh. Here's what the benchmark looks like based off of the step size. I'm assuming that's how much memory it's accessing at one point, and then this is the memory speed. Pretty interesting stuff. All right, let's go back into Windows. All righty, we are back into Windows, and looking over here, you can see that this, um, like I showed you earlier, this. USB is formatted to a size smaller than what it is. So when you're done, you just go back into your memtest86 folder and you're going to click on the image thing, click OK. You're going to click on the thing and what we're trying to do is reformat the USB drive. Double check that you're clicked on the right um, uh, USB device. Oh wait, that's not the one I want. This is the one. I'm going to unplug my other one actually just because there we go I'm gonna exit out and come back in okay sand disk and we're gonna reformat and then we click reformat sand disk yes And then Windows is going to give you an error here, and then you just go ahead and reformat, and you can see it's about 60 gigs. Um, I'm just going to leave it in XFAT. I think, yeah, I'm just going to leave this. I believe this is the block size that it saves in, so it saves in blocks of 128 kilobytes. I'm just going to call it Triton's USB. Oh, Triton's USB, click start, boom, and then just to show you how much storage space we have here, we now have reclaimed our storage space on our USB drive, and that is how you use Memtest 86. Thanks for watching, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button.